I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we are sitting down and talking with Gordon Plotkin. He is the talented author behind four captivating books, a series of books entitled Memories, Dreams, and The Grid, Volumes 1, 2, 3, and 4. The novel takes us on an emotional journey through the life of the protagonist, Grid, as he unravels the mysteries of his past and discovers his connections to two extraordinary characters, Mike and Hank. As he uncovers the truth about his family and his unique gifts as well, we are treated to a thrilling adventure spanning multiple generations, war, love, and sacrifice. We are delighted to have Gordon in the spotlight today. We thank the folks at AMZ Pro Hub for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel. Gordon, thank you so much for being our guest today. Wow, it's really nice to be here. This is quite an epic tale you have written. Is it loosely based on your own life? Um, yeah, loosely really is is the key word. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the early part, so the first two volumes of the book that really cover Hank and Mike, uh, Grid's Dreams, if you will, uh, that's completely a product of my imagination. Uh, the the family history, the origin story, uh, it's kind of a conglomerate of stories that I've heard, you know, growing up, uh, you know, hearing them from grandparents and that. So I just kind of put that all together for the the immigration story. So the, you know, Grid's great grandfather and his great great grandfather, um, it goes back to there and they, you know, they come to Montreal and that's kind of the origin story. But that that part is all uh fictionalized for the sake of the narrative mm -hmm. uh when we get into the second and uh, sorry the third and fourth volume that's a little bit closer to you know my life uh especially the third volume uh it's it's based on my childhood again kind of uh, manipulated to fit the narrative the story and you know to be consistent with grid's journey uh, yeah. so to speak so it's uh loosely based on my life but very much just you know a product of my uh what i like to call my overactive imagination yeah absolutely there's a lot to unpack here and a lot people don't know about the jewish experience during this era um that must have been pretty rewarding in a way to be able to inform people through your novel about a history that you experienced and your family experienced Right. And that's that's a good point, because as I was, you know, creating the backstory, I, I wanted it to be relatable to, you know, uh, you know, people in my situation. I'm fourth generation, uh, half Ukrainian, half Russian. Uh, you know, my family uh, goes back to what they called, uh, you know, the pale of sediment in the uh, in the Russian Empire where there were pogroms. And there was, you know, it was it was very it was a very tough life uh, for many. Um, but my characters were actually quite fortunate um, and not to spoil it, but, you know, they they do get some special help and that's how they get to Montreal. And, you know, the rest of the story unfolds and Grid is born. And as you mentioned, he uh, uh, his history was completely um, not erased, but his family never spoke about that part of the family um so yeah it's a it's a very relatable story um you know I, I i did a lot of i had to do a lot of research uh you know to make sure i got all the facts right but the story uh, it follows history but it it's just this it focuses on one particular family or group of families on this journey to to freedom as you will uh escape from belarus yeah and now we see similar types of tragedies unfolding in the world with the situation in Ukraine and Russia. So it's kind of like history does repeat itself if you're not careful. Uh, unfortunately, yes, uh, mm -hmm. it does repeat itself. And, you know, as you mentioned, it uh, the story does, you know, it spans about 85 years. So it's, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of history behind that. And, you know, you mentioned the uh, uh, the war, World War Two, and of course, everyone's aware of the Holocaust. And, you know, so I don't, you know, I don't get deep into that subject matter. I think it's been treated very well in the media, but it's it's a backdrop to the story mm -hmm. and the Holocaust is significant in how it affects this family. And if you read the book, you'll, I mean, you you know that it 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 did have a very impactful 
uh, albeit indirect effect on this family and, and grid for that yeah. matter. Did you decide this was going to be a four part series in the beginning or did it just kind of take on a life of its own? It absolutely. Um, so if I may, uh, let me just kind of backtrack to, you know, how this all began. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I, I'm 60 years old now, uh, at the age of 56 on January 3rd, uh, 2019, I decided that, um, you know, I wake up early in the morning anyway. Um, for many, many years, uh, like many people of our generation, my generation. And I decided I, I gave up on trying to fall asleep just in time to wake up to go to work. So I now use that time for my writing. So typically, most every day, um, you know, I'll get up at around 3, 3.30, and uh, I'll write for three or four hours before my day job starts. So that's kind of how it started. The story itself was per had been percolating for quite a while, uh, actually, since the age of 19, I, I discovered that I, I wanted to be a writer. Um, of course, uh, life gets in the way of your dream sometimes, uh, which is kind of what happened to me. I, I ended up pursuing a career in business, um, and I have no regrets. It's been, life has been very good. I, I, I could say I've led a, a charmed life, but it got to the point where I felt like my life would not be complete if I didn't pursue this dream of, of being a writer. So I had the basics of the story. I kind of had, you know, I, I had the beginning. I had the the core of the story, uh, which, if I may, is, is um, based on an actual event. There's an elevator scene, uh, which is mentioned early on. Uh, that actually happened, not the way it does in the book, but that happened. And, and that's kind of sparked a little bit of that you know, the PTSD element that's mm -hmm. treated in the book. And it actually happened to my real grandfather, uh, the character on whom Mike is based. Uh, but it wasn't during the war. So that kind of kind of sparked, a, a you know, one element of the story. And, um, you know, I also, you know, I also um, wanted to um, create this esoteric connection, right? There's the esoteric connection between Mickey, um, Mike and Grid. And that's kind of how it all formulated before I sat down to write it. And, and as I sat down to write it, of course, I didn't expect to write four, a four novel epic series. Yeah. It was supposed to be one book. I knew it was going to be long, but I didn't think it would be that long. But as I was writing the book, there are four natural breaks in the story, which ended up being the four volumes. And working with some editors and also on my own, I realized that, you know, if I want my book to be marketable or accessible, uh, I need to, I, I couldn't pare it down enough. So that's what prompted me to break it up into the four, four stories. And they really are four distinct, you know, eras of the story. Mm -hmm. And it kind of flows nicely. Absolutely. So I guess that was a long winded way of, of <laughs> answering your question. <laughs> no, no, no. It's uh, we've got a lot of time here and uh, there is a lot to unpack. So it's good to get the full explanation for sure. For the folks at home, let's give them an overview of what your books are about. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, that's, uh, of course, that's usually one of the first questions people ask when they find out that I've written the book. Um, I mean, it's about a lot of things. Uh, right. I would say thematically, the most important thing, I believe, it's, it's about family, mm -hmm. uh, the importance of family, uh, brotherhood is a very important theme. Um it's about relationships. And of course, you know, there's that underlying theme of, you know, the anti-Semitism and how, you know, not just broad, but how it affects this one particular family. And it is quite impactful uh, how it does. Um, you know, it's also a journey of, of discovery, uh, you know, not to be too cliched, but, you know, Grid, as you mentioned before, he he doesn't, you know, he doesn't know who he is or he doesn't know the full scope of who he is. He's, you know, part of this at one time, very special family. And for one reason or another, I don't want to give it away, but for one reason or another, uh, his family just completely obscures that from his life. So it's it's discovery. And, you know, he's he the, through his dreams every night, there's that connection. And if you can just imagine if that were real, you know, you go to bed at night and you're dreaming about these people that first you don't even know they're real and you don't know that they're connected to you. So and nobody in his family wants to <clears throat> acknowledge that or support him. So that that's a really that's 
kind of the crux of it. That's the main theme. Uh, of course, it delves into, you know, the horrors, the atrocities of war. Um, you know, I also tried to, uh, you know, the relationship between the characters. Um, actually, I've been told that my dialogue is 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 quite good, quite mm. believable. And I, I do a lot of that in the book, you know, to build that characters. And, you know, I try to try my hand at a little bit of humor, you know, that that kind of thing to, you know, to kind of take the reader on that emotional roller coaster. There are obviously there are some with the war and everything, there's some extremely intense and violent situations, things that are even hard to talk about. Um, but they have to be there uh, to, you know, to show that. Uh, and then there's the very light side, you know, the relationship between the brothers, Hank and Mike, they're always uh, in a, in Yiddish, we say kibitzing, right? They're always like, they're. it's almost like they're never serious, but they're, but they are serious. Right. Um, yeah. So it it's, um, it was, it was a very um uh interesting journey for me uh both you know creating these characters and discovering their personalities along the way yeah um and probably so a, a journey sure. of self discovery as well you're learning about yourself as you put all Ab this down absolutely and you know and I'm, i don't know if you can tell it, it make it i get emotional sometimes yeah. think you know talking about it yeah uh, but yes it was a very it's it has been if I if I don't sell even one book, which is too late, I've already sold several. But even right. if I don't sell one book, uh, Logan, this was a very rewarding experience for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. The process of writing is wonderful. You're living in that world while you're creating it. And uh, in some ways, it doesn't matter what becomes of a novel. We all want it to become a film or we want it to become, you know, a bestseller. But the process of writing is not to be underestimated as well, because it's uh, quite a wonderful creative process, I find. I'd imagine you feel the same way. Absolutely. I mean, I, I have goosebumps right now. Yeah. Uh, over, you know, over the fact that, you know, I, I've, I've achieved this. This is yeah. something, it was a big project and, and I uh, achieved it. I hope that I produced a good quality product. Uh, so far, my reviews have been, you know, quite uh complimentary mm -hmm. um but it is a lot it's it's a it's a commitment to read my my story because it right. is it's a long you know it's four books um but um well once you're into it you're into it and it's a story that absolutely. continues yeah so yeah. i think yeah. it's uh yeah. it's a good investment your work prior to this has been as an editor correct yeah uh, no no actually i my my day job if you will i, I live in the corporate world Mm -hmm. um, I'm a regional director for a major uh, construction equipment company. I'm not sure okay. if I can mention the name, but I, I'm the regional director in Canada for a major construction equipment company. So that's my day job and that occupies me. So there's a bit of a dichotomy between what I do during the day and what I do for three to four hours before the day, right. uh, which actually turns out to be quite therapeutic. If you, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, absolutely. Yeah, we yeah. live to work and we work to live yeah. sometimes. Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. Who would be your targeted audience for this book? Who do you think would get the most out of it? Well, I think, uh, well, first of all, I think, you know, some people who are interested in historical type novels, um, you know, I tried not to make the book seem too much like a textbook, but there is right. quite a bit of information in there, like, you know, clarity and, uh, you know, kind of opening people's eyes as to some of the reality that that went on over the, you know, during the, the time frame of my work. Um, yeah. I'm going to say, you know, baby boomers, people, my contemporaries, um, obviously there's, you know, there's the Jewish uh, element to it. So, mm -hmm. you know, that would definitely be a draw. Um, although I've had uh, some of my non-Jewish readers have told me that um, it was eye opening for them. Um, yeah. You know, as far as some of the interest intricacies I include in it, it's like, wow, it's this is very informative. So they're, you know, they're being entertained and educated at the same time. Exactly. Um, yeah. That's how I found the, it. The age demographic, I'm going to say it's uh, probably like the 40 plus, maybe even into the 50 plus range. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, you know, people who like series, serial, long books, something that, you know, they can't wait for the next one to come out, which, by the way, I am working on number five as we wow. speak. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it will be a sequel continuation of, of the story. Um, you know, it's funny because uh, I originally I thought of I have another uh, novel in the works that's completely different. 
And uh, I thought of doing that in between, but Logan, I, I'm I'm so in love with these characters yeah. that I can't leave them alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It's great to feel that way. Like I said, when you're in that space, when you're writing, when you're creating that world, there's nothing like it. And when you're doing it, and I've read this a lot about writers, writing early in the morning is almost like writing drunk because you're in a dreamlike state still. So that is really your most imaginative time. So you're you're right on the money there with getting up early and writing. And that's what I do as well. I get up early in the morning and write. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, I guess you if I can give any advice to anyone who's yeah. who's struggling to, you know, to take that first step is just do it. Right? Cause mm -hmm. once you do it, you'll you'll if you're really a writer, and I, I actually wasn't really a writer when I started. I discovered and learned how to be a writer. I mm -hmm. actually hired a very talented uh, editor and I would like to speak about him a little sure. bit. Uh, um, I hired a very talented uh, editor and I learned how to write as I was writing this novel. He was he was very very uh, very helpful. He mm -hmm. really took me under under his wing and uh, I'd like to mention his name because sure, uh, he, he passed away mm -hmm. halfway through the second edit of my book. Um, but I captured his notes and everything and and uh, I kind of channeled him when I'm writing because that's how much of an impact he had on on uh, on my ability or the evolution of my ability to to write um but once you get started if you're if you really are a real writer and I know you understand this but yeah. you you'll get hooked yeah on it Absolutely. and you know you create that work ethic and it's not it becomes not a work I jump out of bed I literally I jump out of bed uh, if if I overslept, meaning if it's if it's three three thirty and not three o'clock, I jump out of bed because I'm missing my that time to to write. Right. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sure in uh, Montreal, Canada, in the winter at three a.m., it's pretty dark, pretty quiet. It's kind of a perfect time to do some writing for sure. Yeah. You were, it said is. you were going to mention the editor's name. I didn't want you to. Yeah. If you want to mention it now, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. So. Yeah, Joel Yanofsky. Joel Yanofsky. He's actually uh, he worked for the uh, one of the local papers here in Montreal. He's a professional book editor, um, a, a writer. He's written a few of his own uh, fiction, nonfiction. Uh, he actually happened to be my next door neighbor mm. at the time. I didn't even know he was an editor. Anyways, to make a long story short, we we eventually connected, and at first he he said he didn't have time. Uh, which I believed him because he is a very in-demand person. But because of the neighbor thing, um, he he called me back about a week later and said, you know what, send me 20 pages. And if 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 I think you have something, um, I'll work on it. Anyways, I sent him 20 pages. Mm. Um, it's funny because it's not so much that I had something. It's that I had there were so many problems with <laughs> what I sent him that he could see that he could work with that's right. what i believe that's what made him jump on it and it was a really good working relationship and i really i i, I can honestly say that whatever the quality of my writing is today it's in in large part to his tutelage and taking me under his wing wonderful so, joel wonderful. Yanofsky. It's great you had that collaboration that you learned from him, and I'm sure he learned from you as well. I always feel like there's three types of story. A story that is so compelling that it doesn't matter how it's written. Writing that is so good that it really doesn't matter what the story is. Yeah. And then the third is when you have that great compelling story and wonderful writing combined. And that's when you get magic. Yeah, and, and it's a lot of work. It's, yeah. it's a lot of work. It's a labor of love, but it is a lot of work because, you know, you, you know, I, I have a responsibility to my readers uh, to, you know, not have them get to page 300 and decide that it's not worth finishing. Mm -hmm. Right. That's my responsibility to my readers. And over such a large body of work, you know, I had I really spent a lot of time making sure you know, there's no continuity errors or inconsistencies in the story or some of the things that might be a little far fetched outside the context of my novel. They need to be plausible. That's yeah. I took that very seriously. Joel taught me that he said, you know, he told me that 
you you need to respect your readers. Yeah. Um, one of the th two parts of that is giving them uh, enough mm -hmm. uh, of the story to, you know, um, be able to use their own imagination uh, and not giving them too much so that they must use their imagination because if you do that you've captured them and and now they're not they're absorbed in in your, in your novel and i hope i did a good job with that oh i think you did absolutely um tell me a little bit about the cover art it's pretty interesting and in how that came about and what it's oh. significant of well actually my my youngest son austin is the artist in wow. the family so uh, you're talking about, so there's two different covers. So there's the cover on volumes one and two, which yep. is the picture of the man holding the knife. Yep. Uh, and there's the swastika, which is a very dramatic image. Uh, so that's actually not a scene from the book. It's there's certain elements. Uh, so my son drew that, um, you know, I kind of set it up for him. I, I kind of described what I wanted it to look like. Um, so the symbolism of it is, well, there's the soccer ball which is kind of a a little bit of an Easter egg like theme in, in the novel. Uh, so that the soccer ball itself, because early on there's a scene that involves a soccer ball that kind of triggers. It's like the first domino, right? Mm -hmm. In this whole saga. Uh, and it's a gentleman, a burly gentleman holding a blood dripping knife. Mm -hmm. um, and the assumption is that he just killed Nazis, right? Right. Um, that's not a scene, but that's a very um, that's a very important concept for the first two uh, novels of the book. It's it's almost driving the story. It's it's um, that scene with the soccer ball is where the villain is introduced, or the first villain is introduced, um, and that carries through. So it's um, you know it's like it's more of a kind of a glimpse of of the themes some of the themes of the uh the first two two volumes uh but my son drew it freehand uh he also drew the cover for the um uh, uh mickey's journal it's mm -hmm. which is content there's a little kind of novella contained inside the book so he drew that so um yeah that's that's the story of that uh, that cover one to keep nice to keep it all in the family i presume joel was your first reader but outside of Joel, who was your first reader? Who did you give this book to and say, what do you think of it? Well, uh, actually, a very good friend of mine, uh, Chris Neville, uh, who is still my beta reader. He calls himself his my dummy reader, but he's my <laughs> he's my beta reader. Uh, he's kind of held my hand from from the time I finished my first draft. He's the first person I gave it to. Uh, he and I go back and we've shared some literary stories. And actually, he's from my professional life. But we had that common bond where we share, uh, you know, literary stuff uh so i gave it to him and there's kind of a funny little side story with this um he had printed it out and left it on his coffee table and went away for the weekend mm -hmm. um now his mom lives with him she was you know she's elderly she lives with him um she saw it and by the time he got home she read the whole thing cover to cover every single wow. word Wow. and discovered it so i would say that chris and his mom shirley buchanan who uh, unfortunately just passed away recently right. um they were my first readers and kind of collaborators as well because i you know i bounced ideas off of them and you know chris actually has a more sophisticated liter literary mind than he's willing to admit he's mm -hmm. kind of humble that way but he's actually contributed quite a bit to well he's kind of found um you know errors it's like well i don't know i don't think this fits here that kind of help that he's done mm -hmm. but i would say he's he's probably he and his mom well obviously she's passed away right now but he's he's my main beta reader uh right. you know we talk about the book a lot um a few other people one of my aunts read it uh she fell in love with it of course you know she's not completely objective i'm i'm her <laughs> favorite nephew so <laughs> um but yeah, a handful of people read it. And, um, you know, one of the challenges uh, in getting feedback or I can't say honest feedback because not pe people aren't out to, you know, shine me on. But uh, it's hard to get objective feedback uh, from people that 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 like you, that <laughs> you know, that know you. Um, so I did. I hired uh, two other editors, like more like proofreader type editors. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, they helped as well to, you know, identify a few things here and there that needed to be adjusted. Yeah, Wonderful. So, but touch- Chris and Shirley. Chris, Chris and Shirley. Shirley. It was really a compliment that Shirley just picked it up without even being asked and enjoyed it so much that she read it cover to cover. Yeah, and every version of it, because as I would revise it, I would send it to them, and she read every, there's a, like a stack of, wow. there's a stack of papers, all the pages that they printed out on, I saw it once when I visited them, it's like twice the size of the book, but she read every single word I wrote, so. Amazing. That was very nice. That, that's great. Like I said, it's quite a compliment. We touched upon this briefly, but have you envisioned this as a series, perhaps? Uh, not a book series, uh, yeah. a film or a TV series. Um, well, actually, my wife. Uh, that was the very first thing she suggested after having read, you know, enough of it. Um, because there's actually, well, there's kind of two parallel stories. There's Grid's story and there's Hank and Mike. Right. Um, it's been suggested to me that the Hank and Mike story can continue because there's mm. parts of their life that aren't covered in this novel. I could create a whole series, which... Now that you mention it, my next book is a continuation of that. So Grid is now a writer and as a, um, you know, a a thread running through this next novel, uh, I'm going to include a few short stories that include Hank and Mike. So that is a series and that could be a standalone if I want to. Uh, But yes, the series will continue. Um, You know, Grid now has three sons, Mm -hmm. uh, each who are gifted in their in in their own way and this story is now bringing in that next generation and unfortunately saying goodbye to the uh some of the older generation that we fell in love with in the first uh in the first books so yes definitely a series but i know you asked about uh movie and tv exactly yeah so yeah so it's sort of written with that in mind, in fact, several people have commented that my writing reads sometimes like a like a script because mm-hmm. um, I'm very descriptive. I, you know, I describe mannerisms, reactions, facial expressions, I, you know, that kind of thing. So it's almost like stage direction, which Joel warned me not to do too much of that. But, you know, where it fits, it it fits. So, yes, absolutely. I, I, I as I'm writing it, I could see it as a as a series right yeah okay this is the next episode yeah definitely okay let's talk about actors a little bit who would play hank (laughs) who would play mike who would play the grid oh my gosh um (laughs) you know what i i haven't really thought of mike and well grid wow you're putting me on the spot because then i I would have to show my job vanity (laughs) well a lot of people say that i a lot of people say I remind them of Harrison Ford. Well, you know, I can um, see that. So I don't think that's being vain for sure. Absolutely. OK, so yeah. but, you know, Harrison Ford is actually 20 years older than me. That's so, the thing. He's aged out of right. the role at this point. So we need um, to find a young Harrison Ford. So maybe like a Chris Pine or someone like that. Yeah, well, yeah. but uh, Scott kind Eastwood, of, Clint Eastwood's son. Well, the, all of these people are are too handsome. Uh, oh, it's okay. got to be someone. Well, I describe Grid in the book as not overly handsome. So right. he, the actor would have to be not overly handsome. Um, but there are a few characters that I've really thought of, um, you know, visualized certain act, uh, actors or actresses. There's a character uh, named Shoshana uh, in the book. She comes in in uh, the, uh, well, she's introduced in volume two, but she's more in volume three and four. Uh, she's uh, kind of a, if I may say, she's a bit of a, like a, a, a badass uh, <laughs> and so i i thought of um um oh the the actress who played wonder woman um oh, i'm at yeah. a loss for- I, I know exactly who you're talking about a gorgeous uh gal uh galdo uh something oh like my that. gosh gal gado gal, gal, gal gado i was close yeah. gal gal gado yeah. yeah gal gado yeah, yeah. she's gorgeous she- yeah but she's also she she i not that i based my character on her but of the you know from Hollywood, from the pickings in Hollywood, uh, she she seems to be the one that would pull it off. Well, first of all, she is Israeli, and that right. character is Israeli, so that would be one thing. And she's badass. Um, and she's she's badass. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't sure if I could say that, but yeah, she is <laughs> badass. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. very strong yeah. woman. Very brings a lot of personality yeah. to her roles. Absolutely, one of my favorite actresses for sure. 
So this is fun. I mean, you're having a great time with this. I mean, it's taken, uh, given new life to your life, it seems. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I, you know, I'm also going to say, and my wife has mentioned that, you know, my personality has not changed, but my personality has adjusted a little bit um, through writing the book. Um, there are some similarities between myself and grid. I actually write about them. Um, you know, I have a very overactive imagination and sometimes I, uh, imagine the worst. That's yeah. one of his gifts and his curse. Right. Um, so after having written the book, I actually developed a mechanism for the character to deal with that, which I now have adopted myself. Um, I, I won't go into detail with it. It's a tick. It's a, it's a tick right. that, that he has to deal with the images that invade his mind involuntarily. And in the past, I mean, I, I have that too. That That's part of my personality as well. In the past, um, I had a harder time controlling it. Now I have a mechanism that, that helps me control that a little bit better. So yeah, I mean, the book, it's, it's changed my life. Uh, also the fact that I can honestly and and with pride uh say that i am a writer yeah absolutely and that is no small task considering you have created four volumes of it again for the audience at home the name of this four book series is memories dreams and the grid volumes one two three and four it is an epic story that will take you through love that'll take you through war that will take you through extraordinary characters and extraordinary discoveries. We've been talking to Gordon Plotkin, the author of these books. And Gordon, let me thank you for being on our show. Oh, it was, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much. I appreciate pleasure is this. all mine. You're an interesting guy. You've got tons of exuberance. So it was fun. Uh, the books are highly recommended. You will not be overwhelmed by these four volumes. You're going to be waiting for volume five, which is in the works. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.